The Victory Miracle Center presents The Believer's Way of Life with Dr. John Wiley. Sharing the Word of God on the Gospel America Television Network. And now, let's join The Believer's Way of Life with Dr. John Wiley. Welcome this morning to Victory Miracle Center. Well, we believe that miracles are the believers way of life. Do not look to the bigness of your situation, your circumstances, nor your trouble. For if you look to those things, the enemy will use those things to defeat you. But rather look to the bigness of your God, and every step you take will be a miracle. Don't you know that miracles are designed and created for the believer? Yes. Miracles were designed and created for you. God had you in mind when he began to manifest miracles. And he wants you to learn how to manifest them too. So that what we'll endeavor to show and to teach us, the believers, how to use their faith to walk in victory and manifest the miracle working power of God in every area of our lives. Not just sometime, not just every now and then, but every time you need one, we want you to know, we want you to learn how to go before God, use the word of God to manifest miracle signs and wonders on a consistent, ongoing basis because we believe that miracles are the believers way of life. Now let's pray and we'll go right into our message for the day. Once again, we say uh, we're teaching still on the law of the tongue and we want to go into that, but let's pray first. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for calling our words to be like a hammer to break every stubborn resistance that the enemy have planned and petitioned and declared. We decree and declare right now that the authority and the power that you have placed upon our words will begin to dominate, we begin to manifest, and we begin to produce the results that we are seeking out and that we are longing for. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will give us understanding today that you will open our understanding, you open our minds, oh God, you'll give us clarity. You'll cause your word to be line upon line, precept upon precept. You'll cause your word, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to be understood in a way that we never understood it before. But that the revelation knowledge, oh God, of your word may permeate our minds and our spirit, cause us to walk in revelation. And we say thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you do what you do best, that you know, the Holy Spirit move upon our life, healing, setting free, and delivering. And Father, we say thank you that you caused my words to be words of power, authority for the believer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Now, as we endeavor into this new year, this is the year 2021. There's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of things uh, going to happen this year. But we step out of 2020 into 2021, which is now 2020 is the past. We know we're 2020 in, in detail. It, it caused a lot of devastation and a lot of havoc in the lives of God's people as well as the world. But I believe that what happened in 2020, even though it affected us, it shouldn't have directly affected us because the Bible says the oil and the wine shall be protected in the midst of troublesome times. But before we get into all of that and before we get too far into that, we want to stick with our message today because we have a lot of things going on and we want you to get to the place where you can understand this law of the tongue is very crucial to your survival. It's very crucial to your manifestation and it's very beneficial 
to your, to your manifestation of the things that you desire for yourself. So let's deal with this once again. Uh, what is a law? A law is a rule of conduct developed by government or society over a certain territory. A law is enforced and controlled by the controlling authorities. Now get this, laws are, cut, laws are set to govern your conduct and your action. That means that you can disqualify yourself by not operating this law the way it should. So with that in mind, let's go to what we left off last time. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. 2 Corinthians 11 chapter. Let's start at verse 3. It says, But now I am fearful, lest that even as the serpent beguile Eve by his cunning, so your minds may be corrupt and seduced from wholehearted and sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Let me say now. He said, as the serpent beguile Eve, he said, I am concerned that the enemy will use trickery to divide your heart so you would not be able to be focused, so you would not be able to manifest the things that God desires for you to manifest like he wants you to manifest. He said he's concerned that you have limited manifestation. In order to get limited manifestation, you have to have limited focus. So he's saying here that he wants you to be wholehearted thinking and don't let the enemy come in and divide you in your mind. Because that's how the enemy operates. The first thing the enemy does is to deal with your mind through your feelings and your emotion. Now, in the midst of this, if we're going to be able to manifest the way God wants us to, we're going to have to learn how to control our mind. We're going to have to learn how to control our emotions. And we're going to have to learn how to control our feelings. Because those are the things that the enemy is going to use or try to use to trip us up and get us to the place where we would not be focused or single eye or single minded like God wants us to so that we can truly be focused. Now let's read that again. He says, But now I am fearful, lest that even the serpent beguile Eve by his cunningness. Now notice now, the enemy is cunning. He crafty. He sneaky. What he going to do is use your own feelings and emotions against yourself. I want you to get that. The enemy's assignment is to use you against you, use you against each other, use you against your family, use you to focus on the situation and circumstances and not focus on The problem being solved. He wants you to focus on your hurt, say your pain, what you think took place. In reality, he has the power. Now notice now, the enemy is tricky. He is a spirit. That means that he can appear to be something, appear to show you something if your mind is not single-minded. Calling you to see things really not the way they really are. His job is to try to get an advantage of us. And he said he was concerned that the enemy would get an advantage over you and cause you not to be able to see the word of God wholeheartedly. Now, if we can't see the word of God wholeheartedly, we're not going to be able to manifest the miracle that God desires for us to manifest. Why? Because we become divided in our thinking. If we are divided in our thinking, 
That means now we slip and slide between opinion and now unbelief comes in. And now you cannot manifest the way God wants you to manifest or the way you desire to manifest. You can't get the results that you intended to get because things are happening behind the scene that you're not aware of. So God wants to be single hearted. He wants us to be focused. Focus minded. Now, in order to be focus minded, I got to learn how to focus in and focus out. I like to say it this way. I can't manifest nothing that's not a part of me. So in order for us to focus in, we have to learn how to focus in on the word of God, focus in on the solve of the problem, and not focus in on the situation or the circumstances that we're dealing with. Because if we focus on those things, the enemy is going to use those things to defeat you. I'm going to say that again. If you focus on your feelings, your emotion, the problem, the situation, the circumstance, if you focus your mind on those things, the enemy is going to use those things to defeat you. But if you learn how to become single-minded, single-focused, focus on the Word of God, and solving the problem. Then every step you take will be a miracle or can be a miracle for you. Now, I like to step out a little while and go a different route than what I wanted to go. But I'm going to stay in the same segment. Now let's go to Genesis first chapter. And I want to see something here because God began to manifest something here in creation that we need to know how he did. We need to understand his way. Now I want us to go to verse 22 and look what God did. The Bible says here in Genesis 1, 22, God created the great sea monster and every living creature that moved. Now, I don't care what you see in the world, the enemy didn't create anything, God created. Man didn't create anything, God created. Which the waters brought forth abundantly, according to their kind. Now, he stated that everything come together, everything manifests after his own kind. Every winged bird, according to his kind. And God saw it was good, suitable, admirable and he proved it. Now, look what took place. God created these things. He seen these things. Hmm. Mm -hmm. He approved these things. And he manifested these things. Now, we have to do the same thing. But before we conclude that, let's go to verse 27. Let's begin, verse 27, same book, Genesis 1. It says, So God created man in his own image. Now I want you to see that he created the fish and he created the sea monsters. And now he created man. In what? His own image. Man is the only being that God created like himself. In the image and likeness of God, he created him. Male and female. He created them. Now notice now, when he created them, they had the same authority. They had the same power. They had the same right. So ain't no sure thing that man can create a woman can. Book of the Creator. Verse 28. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. And subdue it. Use all the vast resources in the service of God and man and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over every living creature that moves upon the earth. Now, I want to see something taking place here. God said to man, he said to the sea monsters, he said to the fish, be fruitful and multiply. Now, as we discovered last week, 
fruitful mean movement. It means activity multiplies or add to what's already there, producing more of something. Now, if I want to increase, I'm going to have to do more than I've been doing because my job is to do what? Be fruitful. Fruitful means I have to put some action. <laughs> Glory. I have to put some action to what I believe so that I can so I can be more fruitful in the thing that I desire. Once again, what does fruitful mean? Movement. It was told me to keep it moving. No matter what you experience, no matter what you're going through, I gotta keep it moving. If I'm going to be fruitful, you cannot let the enemy stop you. You cannot let, let situation hinder you. You cannot problem stop you from doing what God has commanded you to do. He commanded you to be fruitful. So no matter where you at, if you have to be slowed down, you have to move like a turtle, you got to keep it moving. And sometimes we have to move slow. Not because we want to move slow. But sometimes situation dictates for us to move slow because we have to wait on revelation and manifestation to get us from one level to the next. So we have to be sure-footed in where we put our feet so that we can be fruitful. Now, fruitful means once again, movement. So no matter where you find yourself at, no matter where you find your situation at, no matter what situation circumstance you find yourself in, you got to keep it moving. You can walk yourself right out of your problem. You can run yourself right out of your situation. But if you slow down, the enemy going to catch you. If you slow down, the situation is going to overpower you. If you slow down, the circumstance is going to crowd you in. So you have to keep it moving. Now, it says here, being fruitful is producing what's already there, but create more. Say more. So if I want to do something, if I want to be fruitful, I'm going to have to create more of the things that I desire by greater movement. So I'm going to move out greater. I'm going to do more. I'm going to accomplish more. I'm going to set my vision, my mind to do things that I haven't done in 2020. Now it's 2021, and now it's just if I want more, I got to do more. Am I giving? Am I speaking? <laughs> Am I manifestation? So now he says here to be fruitful. Now these are the laws of creation that God created for us, or that God created for us to live by, and profit by. Now he said, verse 27 again, 28, I'm sorry. He said to be fruitful. Then he said to multiply. Hmm. What do multiply mean? To increase in numbers. Great. To find the product more than one way. In other words, if I'm going to increase Greatly, I got to find more than one way to increase. I just can't focus on one way. I have to be now, create, or find out how to create multiple streams of whatever I want to do. Multiple streams of ministry, multiple streams of finances, multiple streams of healing. So it, it, there's no such thing as one way to be healed. God got many ways for us to be healed. But we have to tap into that one that taps into our faith. What brings out what God has placed on the inside of you? So if I'm going to multiply, that means I'm going to increase. I'm going to increase in what? I'm going to increase in healing. I'm going to increase in finances. I'm going to increase in relationship. I'm going to increase in family. I'm going to increase. Now, to increase, we have to make a decision. Because increase is not automatic. Being fruitful is not automatic. We have to decide we're gonna have to we have to decide we're gonna increase and we have to have a plan of action to increase. Now let's go back to fruitful. Fruitful according to Webster means capable 
are producing, are manifesting what it takes capable of producing of manifesting what you have what it takes in other words you got it on the inside of you God have already given to you you're capable of manifesting so being fruitful means that you have already had it God have already equipped you with it the Bible says this that treasure and earthly vessel. Now you're the vessel of the earth, and the Bible declared there treasure on the inside of you. So if there treasure on the inside of you, you are the one gonna have to find what that treasure is and bring that treasure out to be given to the world, to be given to society, to be given to the community, and even to yourself. It's not God responsibility to find the treasure. He already departed the treasure. What did he part of that? In the earth. Who's the earth? We are. So now it's our responsibility to find out the treasure that's on the inside of us and begin to use that treasure and all the bad resources that God has given us to be able to be fruitful and to be able to multiply in the earth. Now, I like that. Because now it gets you to the place now where you got to look within yourself and stop looking to the outside, stop looking to everybody else and find out what God has placed on the inside of you. What's the revelation that God has placed on you on, in, in, in your life? What's the understanding that you have greater than anything else you know? Because those are going to be the things that going to carry you into the place of prosperity, fruitfulness, and victory. And if we learn those things, those are the things that will cause us to ride on the high places of God. Now notice now, he says to be fruitful. He says to multiply. Multiply means to increase in number. To find the product. So in other words, if you don't have a product, you got to find it. Where is the product located? The product is located on the inside of me. As I spend time with God, God will allow me to see what he has placed on the inside of me so that I can begin to see the problem. Remember, you cannot manifest that which you cannot see. If you can't see it, you're not going to manifest. Why? Because seeing is believing. Well, in the, in the natural world, they you feeling for that. But the Bible declared that God, the first thing that God did when he spoke it, is that we did what? He seen it. You got to be able to see. You got to be able to see yourself victory and walking in victory. You got to be able to see yourself healed. You got to be able to see yourself delivered. You got to be see. You got to be able to see yourself manifesting millions for the glory of God. Is that what you desire? You got to see yourself being a millionaire. You got to see yourself being a business owner. Yes, these are the things that you must see. And the Bible says that you have to find the product according to. The direction of the dictionary. What this means to multiply. To multiply means you got to find your product. The fish found its product. That's why they multiply. <laughs> Believers, we must find our product. What God called you to do. What God asked you to do. What is God's will for your life. These are the things we must know. In order to manifest miracle signs and wonders, you got to know these things. The Bible declares that those that know their God is what? Strong. You can't be strong if you don't know. He said they shall know their God and they shall do. They know their God. They understand his way. They understand his law. Now to be fruitful means they go and do. They go and do and it causes us to multiply because Action is the only thing that really, really details our multiplication because faith is action. We can talk all day long. We can talk uh, left and right. We can talk high and low. But if we don't produce no action, ain't nothing going to show. So we got to make, learn how to produce some action. Move out in the things of God. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Isaiah. 
it speaks to us because God wants us to be the manifest. Now, once again, we're still talking about the law of the tongue. All this implies with your tongue because if you don't say it, you ain't going to see it. Well, I don't see it. That's why you ain't saying it because you ain't saying it. You got to learn to talk your way into the blessings of God. You have to learn how to speak your way into the blessings of God. If you want something in your life, you got to talk it to yourself. You got to talk it till you feel it, talk it till you believe it, talk it till you understand it, and talk it till you begin to do it. You got to talk yourself into it. Isaiah 43, let's start at verse 26. It says this Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou, thou may be justified. Verse 26. Put me in remembrance. Remind me of your rights. Remind me of your word, my word. Remind me of your of what I told you. Let us plead and argue together. God said, wait a minute. This is what I want from you. I want you to come before me boldly. And I want you to argue with me. How do you argue with God? You go before God. And you go before God telling him what his word say. That's the only argument that God understands. You don't go with your feelings. You don't go with your emotions. You go with your words. Words are the only thing in your life that containers. That if you speak those words, those containers will be filled and manifest the life you desire. God wants you to come before him. And he wants you to argue with it. What you going to argue with? Words. You ain't going to hit God. You can't be hit. You can go to him. Fight. What you going to You going to fight with that? Because you can't hit him. He wants you to come with his words. Your words. Say with me. My words are the manifestation that I need. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, the Bible says God will hear from heaven. The first thing you got to get God to do is hear you. And if you ain't speaking nothing, he ain't hearing you. He said, after he hears you, then he will respond to you by what? Healing your land. I want God to heal me. I want God to heal my situation. I want God to heal my circumstance. But not without you speaking words of healing. Not without you speaking words of deliverance. He said, put me in remembrance. Remind me of your merits. Let us plead and argue together. Set forth your case. He said, wait a minute now. I want you to understand that now you are an attorney coming before the righteous judge and you are the lawyer. So what I want you to do now, I want you to come and plead your case to the judge. How are you going to do that? With work. You don't just go before God, sit down in his brother and remind him. No, oh, he see you there. But that don't move him. The only thing that moves God is faith. The Bible says without faith, it's impossible to plead God. How do we activate our faith? By our words and our action. By our words and our action. So if we do not say anything, God don't hear us. I say it again. If you ain't saying nothing, God don't hear you. So if God don't hear you, how can his word be performed in your life? How can you perform the word that you are not saying? Because faith comes by what? Hear it. Hearing by what? The word of God. So that means if you don't speak the word, you ain't going to have no faith. What well, well, I hear the preaching. Well, the preaching will always be there. What about when you're going through situations, you're going through circumstances, when you're going through trouble and ain't nobody there? The Bible said David learned how to encourage himself. How do you encourage yourself? Yeah, you can sing yourself. You can dance to yourself. But see, those things are inspiring. It will give you what we call excitement. But those things will not encourage you because only faith encourages. Only words encourages. Songs are words. 
But in order for those things to really take place and be a, a, a what we call a, a hammer in your life, those words have to be decisive. Those words have to be targeted. That's why I like to call it target faith or targeted faith. Because your word has to be targeted in your life to produce the things you desire and want in life. The, the only way that you will get married with God is that you have to remind God of what he said. God only responds to his word by faith. God only responds to his word. So we have to learn how to do what God said to do. We have to do it the way God said to do it. The Bible says that, he does not. When God wanted to create fish, he spoke. When God wanted to create the earth and form it, he spoke. So if we're going to create things and we're going to do things the way God designed for us to do them, we got to create them. How? With our words. Now, Twenty-six. Put me in remembrance. Remind me of my merit. Let us plead together. All of together. Set forth your case that you may be justified and prove right. Now he says that you have to prove yourself right. You have to prove yourself right. Who gonna prove themselves? You do. How do you prove yourself? By bringing the word of God into the court of God and reminding God of what he said. Well, you don't have to go, you don't have to go to such a stream, but yes, you do have to go through such a stream. You go and get every strip you can concerning your situation, and you pray to God and you speak those things over your life, every day of your life, until you see see the change and get the results that you desire. The Bible declares there's nothing here but the word declare. That, that would bring the word of God to him mean to declare. Declare means this, to make known formally, official, to make clear, to make evident, and to affirm. So if I go before God and I bring his word to him, I'm declaring. What do declare mean really? Declare me that I'm no more than doing what I'm doing is making a declaration. See, declaring and decreeing is different. Declare me that I'm making a declaration. I'm telling God what he said. Declare, declare, declare. It means to affirm. It means to make known. I'm making God known to what he said. I'm making God known to what I want. I'm making known what I desire. And I'm doing it officially. Officially. Why? By making a sign. I'm telling the atmosphere. I'm telling the situation. I'm telling the circumstances. I'm telling the devil. And I'm telling everything that's around me that this is what I want. This is what I desire. And I'm not going to have anything less than what I desire. That means that I'm declaring. Declaring don't move God. It should move us to faith. Why? Because the Bible says that faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. What is declaring? A declaration. Declaring is a declaration of our faith. It moves us to faith. To do what? To act on what we're saying. Declare and move us to faith to act on what we're saying. That's why it says faith come by here. As you begin to say it, the more you say it, the more you get more your faith increase, the more you believe in what you're saying, and then you can be able to act upon what you're saying and now get the result that you desire because you're going to put forth now the effort to get it done. How? By your faith. By your faith. See, 
What is a decree? The Bible says we decree a thing that God will bring it to what? Pass. Now, what is decree? A decree is different than a declaration. A declaration, once again, is something to make known formally, official, to make clear, to make evident, to affirm. A declaration is no more than establish your vision, telling what you want. That means you are now formally forming the vision that you have in your, in your life. You letting it be known. Decree. Decree is an order having the force of the law. Oh, did you get that? A decree is an order having the force of the law knowing God's will. A decree either judicial or royal according to the will of God. Decree means to divide to separate and to destroy. Wow. A declaration do not divide, it do not separate, and it does not destroy. The most decree is a law. A declaration is a declaring. Declaring what? What you want. What you desire. Decree is a legal authority of law that you use to manifest what you declare. Once again, a decree is a legal law already established that we use to manifest what we're saying or the declaration that we're speaking. And what the Bible says, you decree a thing, and he will bring it back. Why would he bring it back? Because it's a law. A law is something that's already set and established. It's a decree. It's already written. It's already an activation. And when a law is set and is activation, Guess what? Whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, whether we understand it or not, that law always operate if we if we don't even understand it. But if you learn how to abide in it, if you learn how to walk in it, you can manifest that law each and every time you need that law to operate for you. Why? You can step into something that's already there. It's a law. And the law is already there. What you do is just step right into the manifestation of that law. You ain't creating nothing. You're just establishing something. For example, a creed or decree that I'm blessed, it established the blessing while separating from any purpose against it by the devil and destroying his plans against us. I say that again. For example, a decree or I decree that I'm blessed. I establish the blessing while separating from any purpose against it by the devil and destroying his plans against my blessing. That means that when I decree something, I now separate it from the devil and from every enemy that's opposed it. That means nothing now should be able to him that decree. Why? Because it's law. And when we're on the, the Bible says this, and now we have Joshua spent time with God, or stayed before God, and the word that he spoke came to pass. Why? Because he understood something. That when you get in the presence of God, you learn how to use the laws of God. God will back up the law because the laws are already set in motion to do what God has already intended for it to do. You don't have to recreate it. It's already been created. Now, the difference between 
the law or the difference between a declaration and a decree a declare once again is a declaration of what you want or desire to happen a decree is a law you declare that's already established and set when you declare a law you are declaring a decree a law already established and set when you decree or declare a law you are already decreeing and establishing something that's already set and already in motion go to Job 22 verse 1 it says, Then it edifies the Temanite answer. Can a man be profitable to God? Hmm. Surely he that is wise is profitable to himself. It is any pleasure or advantage to the Almighty that you are righteous, upright, and right standing with him. Or is it gain to him that you make your ways perfect? Now he asks some questions here. The writer asks some questions. Can a man be profitable to God? Sure. By getting his mind and his feelings and emotions set so he think like God and give God an opportunity to use him, he can be profitable. Anything that be used by God is profitable to God. If God can't use you, you're not profitable. Keep going. Go to verse 28. How do you be profitable? By using the law. But a man being righteous, learn how to understand and use the law. Verse 28. You shall also decree a thing. First of all, you have to decide a thing. Decide what you want. Decide is nothing more than declaring. When I decide something, I declare it. I tell it. I speak it to myself and to other situations, circumstances, and everything around me know what I want. He said, you have to decide on that. That's why people can't manifest the way that God intended for them to manifest miracle signs and wonders. Because they decide a thing and what they do. They change their mind when situations and circumstances get hard. They change their mind when they seem like it, it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to manifest. They change their mind. If you're going to manifest in faith, you have to make a decision and you have to stand on that decision to the end. You cannot be like Vaseline slipping and sliding between your opinions. You have to decide it, and you have to stand on your decision. That means that if I'm gonna if I'm gonna buy a house debt free, I'm gonna have to get the scripture declared. I'm gonna have to stand there. If the money don't seem like it's gonna show up, if situations feel like they don't change, the Bible says this: that you can use the word of God to break every stubborn resistance, like what a hammer. That means if it seems like it ain't going to come to pass, you don't change your decision. You change what you do. A law is established to do what? It's established to show you your conduct and how to act. That means you don't change your conduct because situation don't seem like it's going to line up to what you're declaring. What you do is you increase your speaking time. You increase your speaking action. That means if you've been speaking at one time and it don't seem like it's going to change, you mind up. Because the Bible says the word of God is like a what? Hammer. It'll break every stubborn resistance. Now, just because it ain't happening where you want to, doesn't mean you change your mind aside. Okay, God don't want it that way. Well, when you understood that, you understood the will of God when you decided that. That's the kind of knowing. The Bible said, those that know that God shall be strong and do what? Miracle. Once you know the will of God, you know God. Once you understand the will of God, you understand what God wants. So if you find scripture on it, that's what God desires for you. He said, oh, no man, not but to love him. So you can find three scriptures with that, stand on those three scriptures, and now profess your way or declare your way clean to the miracle that you desire for you to have or the desire you want. 
but you cannot be changing your mind every time the situation show up against you. You cannot be vacillating between your opinions. What opinion? Uh, situation, circumstances, and trouble. Because the first thing going to happen is when you make a stand is that the enemy going to come and try to put pressure on you, discourage you, try to discourage you so that you can do what? Go another way. Go another way. Remember what I said? The Bible says that in the beginning, we talked about that. He said he was fearful that the enemy would do what? He would bring now a change of mind in you that's not righteous and not the way of God. His job is to get advantage over you. And if he get advantage over you, he can shift you and move you, cause you to think the way he wants you to think. And you'll be, you'll be following his ways and actions, not even being knowing what you're doing. You have to keep the word of God foremost in front of you. It has to be the most singular thing in your life. In other words, you have to be single-minded and you have to be focused. You have to focus your faith in. Once again, verse 28. They say, you shall also decide and decree a thing. Now look at now. He said a thing. Decide, make a decision, and decree it. A decision is declaration. Decree is law. What are you going to decree? The thing. The business. The ministry. The healing. The deliverance. The breakthrough. The finances. Whatever you need, you make a decision on it and you decree it. Now, after you decree it, it's law. That means now it's set in motion. It's going to move now according to the law. But you have to stay encouraged in the law. You have to stay in faith in that law. You have to stay believing that that law works for you. How do I do that? By getting that scripture, getting that word, and speak that word every day of my life until I manifest what I desire, until I manifest what I decide, until I manifest, until what I decree manifests. I got to learn how to bring out of the unseen realm into the seen realm, which is the natural realm. And as long as it's in the unseen realm, it's in the spiritual realm. My job is to bring out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm where I can see it, where I can put my hand on it, where I can use it. And the only way I'm going to do that is by speaking the word that's going to birth it out of heaven into my word. The Bible says the creel thing. And God will bring it to pass. Let me say it now. Finish that. He says, and it shall be established for you. He said you decree it. You decide. You decree. You can't, you can't decree before it's time. Before decide, deciding is what? That's your foundation. That's your vision of what you want. That's the vision of what you desire. The Bible says, if it, if any two touch anything on the earth, he said, will be established by them two. He said, any two agreeing on earth and touching anything, he said, will be done for them. That means what? You decree in a law. That law is the law of agreement. And the reason why people can't, reason why we can't manifest the law the way we know to or need to, because we don't understand the laws and how they operate. But once you understand these laws and know how these laws operate, <laughs> you can manifest these laws. But you have to, look what he told Joshua. Go to Joshua. Go to Joshua for a moment. One, Joshua one. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. So now rise and take your place, go to Jordan, you and all the people, into the land which I am giving them, the Israelite. He said, if you're going to go to the land, it's something you've got to do. Every place of which the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given to you, as I promised Moses. He said, every place your foot touches, I give it to you. From the wilderness of Lebanon to the great river Euphrates, all the land of Hittite, Canaanite, and the great 
the great Mediterranean Sea, on the west shall be your territory. He tells you already where your territory is. He tells Joshua where his territory is. God will reveal to you your territory. Once you begin to speak this, once you begin to declare, once you make a decision for it, that law will begin to move for you, and it will show you exactly what you need to do, where you need to go, and how you need to act. It says, no man shall be able to stand before you all the day of your life. No man. No man. And I will with Moses, so shall I be with you. And I will not fail you nor forsake you. He said, my word will not fail you nor forsake you. You cannot separate God from his word. If, if you decree a thing and it's according to God's will, that word will not fail you if you follow the law. What is the law? The law is speak to the manifest. How often do I do it? And many times I need to. If it's not working the way you want it to, what you do? You increase your speaking. If it's not manifested, increase your speaking. First thing that has to happen is that you have to get to the place where you believe. Mm, 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 mm. See, that's key right there. If you don't believe it, it ain't going to manifest. Because you cannot manifest that which not a part of you. You got to speak it and come to, you got to speak it until you believe it. Until you see it, till you sleep with it, till you eat with it, till you thank it. Everything you do, you talk about it. Then it will manifest because it becomes a part of you. And once it becomes a part of you, it will manifest in your life. Because you, once again, you cannot manifest that which is not a part of you. It's a process that we must go through. It's a process that we may go through. Look what God told Joshua right here. Verse 6. Be strong. Be confident. He said confident is no word and more than the word knowing. You can't be confident in that which you don't know. He said, Joshua, be strong. He said, even though you might think you're weak, you mount your shoulders up, you pull them back, you pick your head up, you declare to your end, you declare to your situation. You declare to your territory that I'm not moving. I decide what I'm going to have. And I'm going to stay right here to everything God coming me manifest. Why? Because I didn't decide and I'm decreeing. And God going to bring the path. He's going to establish it for me. Establish is nothing more than the word manifest. That means when it manifests, it have a foundation. Now, I know the spiritual foundation, the spiritual foundation is the law. The natural foundation is the manifestation. The Bible says God going to establish it. He can establish that which you don't know. He said, those that know me shall do exploits. Those that know me shall do exploits. He said, if you know my will, what is the will of God? God's word. So if I know God, I know God's will. If I know God's will, I know his word. And now you can't separate God from his word. That means now God's word is what? Law. That's the final authority. If I'm going through anything in my life, with a sickness, with whatever it may be, God's word is the final authority. It's law. What do God's word say about? We go through situations, we go through circumstances, and yet we look at people, we look at circumstances, we look at trouble. But very seldom do we go to the Word of God and say, what do God's Word say about this situation? That's the only thing we need to be focused on. The Word of God. He said, be strong, confident, and a good match, a good courage. He's saying being confident, but he's telling Joshua what? You must believe. Confident is no more than word work. Assured. Believe. If you don't believe in you, you ain't going to manifest what you want. If you don't believe in God's word, you ain't going to manifest what you want. So you now have to believe in you that when you speak the word of God, that your word now become God's word, and God's word become your word, that when you speak it, it will accomplish that which you set it out to do. Why? Because God is on the inside of you. <laughs> that means I am one with God. Mm, glory, glory. I am one with God. And the Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. 
Keep going. He says, Good courage, for you shall call this people to inherit the land which I spoke to their father to give He said, Because of you, because of your manifestation. Huh. See, that's why people are watching. That's why you need to manifest. Because of you, because of you, because of me, people are watching. And as I begin to manifest, and they begin to see the results, then it will cause them to be able to follow your example and lead them into the land that God has promised. Why? Because every leader needs a leader. Every people need a leader. <laughs> every family needs a leader. Every husband needs a wife. If you're going to be a husband, you can't have it. You can't be a husband without a wife. Every woman needs a husband. If she won't be a, if she won't be a wife, she got to have a husband. Do what he says now. He says, verse seven. Only you be strong and very courageous, that you may do do according to all the law. He said, you be strong and courageous. Why? So that you can do. So that you can be fruitful. So that you can act. So that you can multiply. So that you will encourage yourself to do what it's said to do according to the law. Because if you don't do the law, you disqualify yourself. It has to be done in the confinement of the law. What is the law? The law is the law of the tongue. A rule of government developed by the government or society over a certain territory. A law is enforced and controlled by the controlling authority. Laws are set to govern your conduct and your action. He said, I set these laws so you can know how you need to act and how you need to do it. He said, this book of the law. Only you be strong and courageous, verse 7, that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do what he said about the law. He said, you keep focused on the law. Don't pay attention to anything else. The law that you decree, that's the law going to stand. What is that law? God's word. He said, don't turn from it. Don't turn from the right to the right. Don't turn to the left. That you may prosper wherever you go. He said, if you stay straight down the middle, if you stay focused, you will prosper in this law. Why? Because this law will not fail. It's already been set. It's already been established. It already put in motion. The only thing you have to do is get in on the motion of the law and the way it will take you to success. It'll take you to success. He said, you'll prosper wherever you go if you don't turn from the law. What is the law? The law is the tongue. That everything you do, everywhere you go, you got to speak it. You got to speak it many times a day, morning, evening, and night. Morning, evening, and night. If you want to move to a certain territory, and if you have proved it already, what you do? You speak it. Morning, Evening, night. If you want to manifest certain money, you have to you, uh, you have to speak it. Night and day. Morning, noon, night. It says this. This law will not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate on it day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in the law. For then you shall make your way prosperous. And you shall have good success. I'm Dr. John Wiley. You're watching Victory Miracle Center. Miracle of the Believers. Way of life. Thank you so much for watching this program on the Gospel America channel. You can download our app from the App Store or from Google Play. And again, thanks for watching on the Gospel America channel.